Welcome to Story Time. I am Reading Buddy. We bring you a story every week. Do you like to go to the stores with your dad and mom? In today's story, a cat and a dog own a shop, selling all kinds of stuff you can imagine. However, their customers are not paying them. What will happen next? Let the reading buddy read you this story, adapted from *The Tale of Ginger and the Pickles*, written by Beatrix Potter. Oh, don't forget to stay until the very end and learn a Chinese phrase with Reading Buddy. Ready? Let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a village shop. The name over the window was Ginger and the Pickles. It was a little small shop. Just the right size for dolls. Lucinda and Jane always bought their groceries at Ginger and the Pickles. The counter inside was a convenient height for rabbits. Ginger and the Pickles sold red spotty pocket handkerchiefs at a dollar and seventy-five cents. They also sold sugar, candles, and shoes. In fact, although it was such a small shop, it sold nearly everything, except a few things that you want in a hurry, like shoelaces, hairpins, and razors. Ginger and the Pickles were the ones who kept the shop. Ginger was a yellow cat, and the Pickles was a terrier. The rabbits were always a little bit afraid of pickles. The shop was also patronized by mice. Only the mice were rather afraid of ginger. Ginger usually requested pickles to serve them, because he said it made his mouth water. I cannot bear," said he, "to see them going out at the door." Carrying their little parcels, I have the same feeling about rats," replied Pickles. "But it will never do to eat our own customers. They would leave us and go to Tepeza Twitch's shop. Twitch is the only other shop in the village. On the contrary." They would go nowhere," replied Ginger gloomily, "because Tabitha Twitchit does not give credit." Ginger and the Pickles gave unlimited credit. Now the meaning of credit is this: when a customer buys a bar of soap, instead of the customer pulling out a wallet and paying for it. She says she will pay another time, and Pickles smiles and says, "With pleasure, ma'am." And it is written down in a book. Okay, this lady owes us forty cents for the bar of soap. The customers come again and again, and buy quantities. In spite of being afraid of ginger and the pickles, the customers came in crowds every day and bought quantities, especially the toffee customers. But there was always no money. They never paid for as much as a penny worth of peppermints. But the sales were enormous, ten times as large as Tabitha Twitchit's. As there was always no money, Ginger and the Pickles were obliged to eat their own goods. Pickles ate biscuits. 
and Ginger ate a dried haddock. They ate them by candlelight after the shop was closed. When it came to January first, there was still no money, and Pickles was unable to buy a dog license. It's very unpleasant. I am afraid of the police," said Pickles. "It is your own fault for being a terrier. I do not require a license, and neither does kept the collie dog. It's very uncomfortable." I'm afraid I shall be summoned. I had tried in vain to get a dog license upon credit at the post office," said Pickles. "The place is full of policemen. I met one as I was coming home. Let us sit in the bell and get into Samuel Whiskers, Ginger." He owes twenty-two dollars and nine cents for bacon. I do not believe that he intends to pay at all," replied Ginger. <laughs> I feel sure that Anna Maria back his things. Where are all my green crackers? You have eaten them yourself," replied Ginger. Ginger and the pickles retired into the living room. They counted the bills. They added up sums and sums and sums. Samuel Whiskers has rounded up a bill as long as his tail. He has purchased thirteen candles since October. How much is seven pounds of butter? A stick. Of sewing wax and four matches. Send in all the bills again to everybody," replied Ginger. After a time, they heard a noise in the shop, as if something had been pushed in at the door. They came out of the living room. There was an envelope lying on the counter and a policeman writing in a notebook. Pickles nearly had a fit. He barked and he barked and made little rushes. Bite him, Pickles! Bite him! Spluttered Ginger behind a sugar barrel. He's only a dog. The policeman went on writing in his notebook. Twice he put his pencil in his mouth, and once he dipped it in the molasses. Pickles barked till he was hoarse, but still the policeman took no notice. He had bead eyes, and his helmet was sewed on with stitches. At length, on his last little rush, Pickles found that the shop was empty. The policeman had disappeared, but the envelope remained. Do you think that he has gone to fetch a real-life policeman? I am afraid it is a summons," said Pickles. "No," replied Ginger, who had opened the envelope. "It is the taxes, three hundred nineteen dollars and eleven cents." This is the last straw," said Pickles. "Let us close the shop." They put up the shutters and left. But they have not removed from the neighborhood. In fact, some people wish they had gone further. Ginger is living in the rabbit burrow. We do not know what occupation he pursues. He looks stout and comfortable. Pickles is at present a gamekeeper. 
the closing of the shop caused great inconvenience. Tabitha Twitchit immediately raised the price of everything a dollar and seventy-five cents, and she continued to refuse to give credit. Of course, they are the merchants' carts, the butcher, the fishman, and the Timothy Baker. But a person cannot live on cookies and sponge cakes and butter buns, not even when the sponge cake is as good as Timothy's. After a time, Mr. John Dormouse and his daughter began to sell peppermints and candles, but they did not keep the standard six-inch candles, and it takes five mice to carry one seven-inch candle. <laughs> Besides, the candles which they sell behave very strangely in warm weather, and Miss Dormouse refused to take back the ends when they were brought back to her with complaints. And when Mister John Dormouse was complained to, he stayed in bed and would say nothing but very snug, which is not the way to carry on a retail business. So everybody was pleased when Sally Henny Penny sent out a printed poster to say that she was going to reopen the shop. Henny's opening sale, grand cooperative jumbo, Penny's penny prices. Come buy, come try, come buy. The poster really was most enticing. There was a rush upon the opening day. The shop was crammed with customers, and there were crowds of mice upon the biscuit canisters. Sally Henny Penny gets rather flustered when she tries to count out change, and she insists on being paid cash. But she is quite harmless. And she has laid in a remarkable assortment of bargains. There is something to please everybody. If one day you own a shop, what kind of products would you like to bring to your community? Perhaps books you like to read. Or toys you love. In today's Chinese time, reading buddy is going to teach you how to say "come on in, please" in Chinese. 请进，请进 If you decide to set up a fun shop for your family in the living room today, when it's all done, you can welcome them by saying "请进 ，come on in, please." Thanks for listening. Please support us by leaving a review and telling a friend about us this week.